welcome to At Home With She Can Grace. I'm Kimberly. And today I've got um, a fun project, hopefully quicker than the last one, um, for you for Valentine's Day. It doesn't even necessarily need to be just for Valentine's Day. I've done up a few different kinds to show you. Um, so I've got them all hanging together. These are drop cloth um, hearts. And I've made them double-sided just to give a person a few different um, ideas. So I'm going to show these to you a little bit more up close and I will leave photos at the end for you um, as well as how I decorate with them. I did up another set that just has a few different colors and then they're double-sided too. But again, I'm going to show them to you a little bit more up close. So um, I did three different sizes and you don't have to hang these. They can just sit and be decorative. So this is the big heart and I've got some cream yarn on here. I just found it in my stash. Um, and then I did the other side. So this would be super cute just to kind of keep out for spring decor with a little birdie. So then I tried to make each of the sides coordinate. So um, the XOXO could be um, cute with the love. And then I put a little faith patch on the back of this one um, that I thought coordinated well with this. Can't hold on to these. Um, but they also coordinate well with each other. So if you wanted it like that, you could have it like that. And then the little guy, again, he's double-sided. He coordinates with both sides. Um, I didn't put anything on this side, whoops, this side of him, because when they're all hanging together, it's actually kind of nice just to have something plain. So I did a little pattern here, and I'm going to um, show you um, how I did all of this. Okay, this set, I changed the colors up a smidgen. I mean, I kept the eucalyptus color because that's my color but I did um, some jute here instead and I couldn't put the beads on it because I sewed the jute into my pillow and then the beads just wouldn't thread onto the thicker jute. The other side with a little love patch and then there is the medium one and then the other side of the medium one, I actually put some cute little buttons. I went and raided my scrapbooking stash <laughs> And then the little, um, the little one. And I kept him plain on that side and really simple on this side. So, um, we're going to get started here. I've got a whole nother set right here ready to go. So I'll take you through them step by step. Let me just move some things so that we could still maybe grab onto these and you would be able to kind of see them as we go. Okay. And then maybe we could just set these guys on this side. Okay. All right. So I've got these prepped. I do have a little bit of sewing to do on them, but I don't have my sewing machine in this room. So, um, I'm not going to show you that that part of it. You could hot glue these edges together if you'd like. So what I've started with is just got to pull my stash from the side here. Um, and this is like the leftover and it's all wrinkled up, but um, bleached drop cloth. So I buy drop cloth and I bleach it and then I wash it. Um, I just um, I like the texture of it because it's a canvas um, and I don't know if you can see, you most likely can't, but it just has um, a really nice speckling to it. And then once you bleach it and wash it, it softens up and makes it easier to use. So I made myself some templates here, three different size hearts. Um, this is 
the big heart that I just cut the middle guy out of. Let me tell you, oh, I don't even know if I have, oh, well, I can use this. Okay, so my big heart is about five inches tall and he's about six inches wide. Uh, the medium heart is about five inches wide and four inches tall. And the small guy is three and three quarters inches wide, three inches tall. Okay, so then what I did was I just took the um, template traced around it with pencil. Um, I erased the pencil after I sewed it. Um, you can still see it a little bit, but for me, I it didn't matter to me because you could barely see it. But you can get um, pens, sewing pens, um, that leave, like I have one upstairs and it's purple, but it actually dissolves. Like uh, over time, it just goes away. So I always use that when I'm marking up um, and sewing my pillows. So I just did one of those of each size and then I left them on a square like this and you could see um, through here maybe the pencil line. So what I did was um, chalked this first and I'm going to tell you about that. And then when that was dry, I went up and sewed around, leaving an opening here. Now you could cut the whole heart out right away um, and take that up and sew it. I just like to have a little extra to, to hang on to when I'm sewing. Plus, I put my yarn into the middle of the heart and sewed that in. Okay, so... Oh, Bean is, uh, gotta come and check things out here. <laughs> okay, so we are going to chalk on these. You could ink on these, um, but because they're not being washed and I just wanted something quick and easy with no dry time, I chalked and I just used two different colors. I've got the um, bright white and then the eucalyptus, which I use all the time. I did use, when I was playing around with these, some retired transfers. So the pattern that I have on this heart, got my stack here, and the small or the large heart is an older pattern. I've used it for so many things. In fact, it's on like all my wooden hearts back here. I've made pillows with it. Um, you might, if you have it, it's called the Unsinkable Collection. It's the floral script pattern. It was a 2020 pattern. I've used this so many times. Now, there, just because it's not available um, doesn't mean there isn't other patterns you can use. There is another smaller floral one that reminds me a lot of this that came out last year. I don't have it yet. I don't know why I don't have it. Um, I will be getting it. I will link all of the um, transfers below and my shop for you to be able to get your supplies if you want to make these. Because um, this next set that I've got is not just for Valentine's Day. Like I plan on um, keeping this set out and probably the others around the home um, in various places throughout the year. And then there is definitely transfers in here that are brand new. We just launched the spring collection on Thursday. So I will leave the link below for that too. Okay, so um, one about to get started here. So because this is all ready, I just thought that I would do a quick cut around here so you can see what I do when I get to the string. So just be careful coming around the top and I like to stop cutting right before I get to the string and then I'm going to separate, making sure I don't cut my yarn 
and then smaller scissors definitely work better for this. And then I just come in from the other side and then that way I left my little sewing scissors in my sewing area. Okay, so fumble around with these big guys. All right, and I'm gonna just get my string out of the way. I'm gonna follow what I just did so I can get the back out of the way too. And then I do turn it around and make sure it's okay. I don't worry too much about it being a straight cut because we're gonna fray these edges. Okay, so let's continue. And I'm cutting, um, gosh, at least a quarter of an inch away from where I have sewn. Okay. Okay. So let's get that out of the way. And then if I have any hard edges, I just want to kind of trim those up and just going to do it here so I don't make a mess of the table. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to show you uh, quickly how I fray my edges and then we'll get moving on to the next guy here. So I usually keep both um, layers together and I just run my, my fingernails over them and fray them up. And you can see how easily they, they fray. Um, there's a couple spots that you might have to pull your layers apart to get in there. And when you come around to the sides where it is going with the grain of the fabric, you're actually gonna get more of, um, I mean, it's still a frayed look, it's just different than what is happening on the rest of, of the heart. This is a good example here. So it's just, you will lose some of your threads and fibers in there. Okay, so what do I got going on here? Oh, it's part of my yarn. Okay, my yarn is kind of, I wasn't very gentle with it, so it has really kind of um, frayed here. This is, I don't even know what this is. I've had it for years. I love this yarn, but it is so delicate, but I use it for, for so much. Um, it usually doesn't fray that much there, but like I said, I wasn't that gentle with it apparently. Okay, I'm gonna put this one aside. Um, and actually, before I put this one aside, we are going to put this little bumblebee on here. I just gotta reach my transfers. Okay, this little bumblebee is from the honeycomb pattern, and it comes with the honeycomb or the hun oh honey and the honeycombs. So we are gonna put this little bee on there. And we're gonna make sure that we get them on there really good. So no fuzzing, cause we're going onto fabric already. I just wanna hide that string so that I don't attach my transfer to it. Um, and I think I'm gonna go just a little on, actually, I think I'm gonna go on this side. Okay. Now, because I did so, I kept um, this kind of like tone on tone with the white on the cream, I am just gonna give little pops of color with the eucalyptus. just want to have my clipboard handy here because I don't we don't want to soak the transfers that long but I don't like it when the paste dries in them because it just makes it harder to to clean so I'm going to put it on here and give it a spritz of water once it's done and then I can wash them after the video 
Okay, so eucalyptus, you're gonna have to hold this down um, and just work as quickly as you can and like try your hardest not to overwork it because you don't want any chalk going underneath. Hopefully I didn't get any leaking through. Just take it up slowly in case you need to put it back down. Actually, that's beautiful. Okay, so I'm putting that on there and then I'm just gonna give it a spritz and get it out of my way so that I don't make a mess. Okay, so there's our bumblebee. He's super cute. So once he's dry, um, I can stuff and sew him. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. And we could dry him really quick with the dryer, but I'm just going to move on. He'll be dry before we know it and we will come back to him. Okay, so we've got the middle guy. So um, on the front of him is some script and that is from, I love this, this collection, um, this transfer. It's the, it's, oh my goodness, I always forget what this, oh, there it is. It's the etched butterflies and there's big butterflies in here. I'll take it out so you can see. Okay, so you've got some bigger butterflies. And then we've got some smaller butterflies. We're gonna use another one. So we've got some smaller butterflies. This is the one we're gonna use today. And then it's got some more extra pieces with it, like a seal and some more script. Number 34 would have been really cool on this too. Um, but this is the script that I used on that heart. And this is available. There's also great big butterflies as well, which I do plan on doing a project with at a future date. So hopefully we'll get a few projects in with this. Okay, so on the, so that's just all it's on this side and this heart is all frayed already. And you can get rid of these pieces if you want. I like them, they'll fall off eventually. Um, okay, so the other side, what I did was I put a little patch on there. So I chalked on another piece of drop cloth and then frayed the edges and I just hot glued it on. Now, that is, it's from the French country minis collection i haven't actually there's so many cute things in here but i haven't actually used much of it and it's no longer available i'm so sorry you guys i was looking for something to match this and um without repeating some of the same items but this is the little piece out of there that we use but there's so many like there's minis um, that just launched and some, I just don't have all the new stuff yet. Maybe there would have been something in there for us to use. Um, so I just used that guy, but you could have used something else. I actually, I started out and I had put this love on there, um, but I wasn't paying any attention and it bled through and it would have been fine, but then I just had the idea to, to do this. So I was trying to keep everything, um, that you could still get, but it was it was a little hard. Okay, so we'll talk about the third heart um, actually in a bit here. So let's just give this guy, let's stuff him. So just some cotton batting, um, actually, or a pillow that fell apart because one of my inserts um, got a hole in it, so that's part of the insert cover. So I am actually using that up right now. So you can make these as poofy as you want. I like to make them nice and fat, so. Okay, 
probably one more. So when I was sewing, I started on this side on my sewing machine and went up and around and then I did back stitch a little bit right here just so I made sure that I caught the string a little bit and then back around. So I just left a little opening. So um, as soon as we're done the big heart, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna sew our hearts closed. But you can already see how cute that is. Okay, so then for the big heart, again, it's got the um, floral script on this side. And on the back side, we're gonna put this etched butterfly. And have this all planned out. He's actually, I kind of want him just a little bit on an angle and I want him more to the right. Really press down good and hard so that you don't get any bleeding or if you get any, it's minimal, but you should be good. Like I ink all the time and very rarely do I get bleeding. Even on a transfer that I've used so much and it's not sticky anymore, I can still use it without getting any bleeding. I just like to try my hardest to go in one direction. Every now and then you have to, sorry, my hand is in the way. Um, I don't know where to put it so that I can keep going in the same direction. Well, I'll just go this way just so you guys can see better. So start in one direction and continue in that direction. I won't go back over what I just did. Lift carefully and slowly because if you need to put it back down because you missed something, you can, oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, and I'm just gonna, where's my water bottle? Give that a spritz. I just want that chalk paste to stay moist in there. I don't want to scrub and scrub and scrub these transfers. Okay, get this. Oh, I should have showed it to you. I will just get that cleaned out of the way and then I will show it to you. Okay. See how sweet it is. And then I've got um, some tags that we're going to make uh, this guy and he's gonna hang in there too somewhere. So um, we're gonna just set him aside to dry. And these tags, I should show you that now. I don't know if you can get them individually on Amazon, but I bought them like a pack on Amazon. I'll try to link those too. I'll try to link everything um, that I've used that I can. Some things I can't because I've been raiding my stash from a few years ago, like buttons and then of course some older transfers. I'll still put the names of the older transfers down there um, just in case you have them and then they're easier for you to find. Okay, those are still drying. Um, let's get these little tags done. So I'm gonna make them the same on both sides. If you want, you can, well, you can do whatever you, you'd like to them. Like on this tag, I put um, the word love. And then on the other side, I just put a little heart. So in case I decided I didn't want that hanging anymore, um, just have to, there we go. It was a little stiff there because I put the little beads on my little tag too. And I'm going to show you all those beads as well. So, um, what did I do on this guy? Oh, I might have done the same thing. Actually I did. I was just trying to keep it simple and using some of the same, the same ideas on both of them. Okay. So, um, but I wanted to change it up and I can't remember where these ones are from. Um, once I come back from sewing, I'll get the rest of the transfers names for you that I used on those guys. Okay, 
So we're gonna use white and we're gonna get these chucked. And I'm doing the same thing on both tags. And so I'm going to lift it up really quick. I've got just the same little um, leaf I put on this heart we're gonna do on this tag. And I'm going to chalk it in white and then I'm gonna lift it up really quick and get it put on the stained one. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna work quick, quick, quick. I should have had a smaller squeegee out here so I didn't go over the edge. I just sometimes cut my squeegees in half and use them. Oh, it's just perfect on there. Okay, let's get this other guy on. Can't press down that hard, but all if I just go in the same direction, should be good without any bleeding. And if I did get bleeding, I just wipe it off, maybe sand and start again. But it's perfect. Oh, I wanna put this on here. I should just leave it beside me, but I know I'm gonna stick my arm in it. <laughs> okay. Like they're so cute. And I like both, like I couldn't decide, so that's why I've made both. Okay, I'm gonna just quick blow dry. like seconds and things are dry. Plus it's nice and warm in here, so. Okay, on the other side, I'm just gonna put the word faith on there. And that is the same as this one. I made a cute little patch and I have some dark chocolate burlap. So I just cut it and put it behind and it worked with these beads that I stained so well. So I'm gonna use that again. Okay, so getting them in the middle the best I can. Show you that looks perfect. And then we'll transfer it right on up to that guy. Okay, beautiful. I'm just gonna quick get them on here and then I will show you. Thing about doing it the way I'm doing it right now is you don't really have the opportunity to change it if you've got it in the wrong spot. This one might be slightly off center, but it'll be fine. All right. Oh, and it's so warm in here that it's already drying in the silk screen. That's good. I'm happy with that. And actually, I got that pretty centered. Okay. All right. So. We have both of those. All right. These, okay. So what I'm going to do guys is um, I'm just gonna stop the video. Oh, wait, I wanna show you something first. So I just wanna close this up so that things don't dry out. I'm usually so cold in this room. Um, so I've got a little heater under my desk right now. And <laughs> it is making things me nice and toasty 
but it is also making everything dry really fast, which is nice. Um, okay, because I want to show you this now before I stop the video and go and um, sew these up before I forget. So I have all of my little beads in this plate and I don't know what sizes these are. Um, I've had them for quite a while already and I bought a whole pack, like assorted pack off at Amazon. I'll see if I can find it, but I've had them for a couple of years, but anyhow, they're quite tiny. Like this guy is half inch and then, um, oh my goodness. I don't know what that is without my other measuring tape, but anyhow, it's between a half and, and uh, a quarter. And then these little tiny guys should be a quarter inch. Yeah, they're slightly bigger than a quarter. Anyhow, I've got three different sizes um, that we're using and I left some of them natural and then I stained some. And what it is that I wanted to show you is how I stained them. I do have a pair of rubber gloves um, that I put on when I do this, but I've got this I don't even know how to pronounce this stain, um, salmon. Anyhow, it's dark oak, it's water-based, and it's great. I love it because then it doesn't smell. So I just put like the tiniest little drop in this plastic cup. I covered it with a paper towel and put in, I betcha I had a dozen beads in here and I just shook them all around. And then I poured them into this um, tray and just made sure that they weren't sticking. Did that again and rolled them around in here and then I kept rolling them around and then um, let them dry. And so because they are hitting each other and that they do, like they're not fully covered, but I liked that kind of worn antique, antique look on them. So um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're not a full coverage. If you wanted a full coverage, you could just paint it on there and I've um I usually do this when I'm painting is I put them all on a skewer and paint them that way and this uh, these little tags this is stained with the same stuff and I just painted it on this is the eucalyptus it's watered down chalk paste so um okay I think I think I'm ready to go sew these up. I'm gonna stuff these because they're I'm gonna dry them, stuff them, sew them up, come back, and we are gonna finish putting everything together. All right, see you soon. Okay, I am back and I've got the little hearts all sewn up. Um, I did go ahead and just get um a few more things prepped on them so that you didn't have to watch me do everything. Um, okay, let's see here. So the little, the littlest guy, I'm going to show you how I thread these beads on because, um, if you've used these beads before, like, I mean, the bead itself is a quarter inch, right? Just, just over a quarter inch. So the holes are really small. So I'm going to show you how to do that, but I put a little knot at the base and then I threaded three on and then um, another little knot. And on some of them, um, like this guy here, I did another knot up here, put more beads on and another knot. Like you can just dress them up however, however you want. Um, this guy, I just did the three beads on it. And this one, I did the same thing, um, a knot and three more beads after I had the three beads down here. And this little tag on this one, I did three little beads. Um, I'm not doing as many on these tags and I'll show you why. And then when it came to the burlap, not the burlap, the, the jute, um, I put a knot down here and then 
on some of them, I just did a knot another part way up just to give it a little bit more interest um, rather than it just sitting there. Okay, so the yarn, um, this the idea that I had when I wanted to do like the the white on cream was because I wanted to use this pretty white yarn and for bows and because I'm really trying to use up what's in my stash and um, I was struggling to find ribbon that I liked in my stash to work for this but I really liked how soft and delicate this looks so I've already made myself some little bows and I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit of glue there and glue it in the center and then I'm going to just trim up these tails. I like to just wait until I have it on there so I can see exactly um, where I want to trim it. Okay, there and, oops, there. And I don't ever trim them evenly, so this is how he looks. And sometimes I like the ends of my yarn to look a little frayed, so I just um, roll them in my fingers. Oh, my little tiny mini Cricut press over there turning off. I was um, ironing my other ribbon. I'm gonna show you this ribbon here. It was like all kinked and I couldn't make it work the way I wanted to. It kept flipping, so I just got my little mini Cricut out and ironed it up. Okay, so I like this really, this is the only white ribbon that I had that I really thought I liked with this. Just went with the idea that I was going for. So I'm gonna glue him on and I am just, I kind of got my glue gun off to the side so as it leaks, it doesn't uh, get all over everything. And it's so, 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 so hot. I should have my little finger um, protectors on, but let's just hope I don't burn myself. Okay. So, oops, I should probably wait for it to be dry until I start moving things around. Okay, now. It's just not sitting the way it was when I started. This guy is sticking out. Okay, so it's, I'm gonna trim up those tails. I might have to put another little dab of glue underneath in the back of that tail so it stands up, but I'm just gonna cut them on an angle and it should be fine, but, oh yeah, that's fine. And if I lay it down, it'll like, cause it's, it's kind of sticking out a little bit there, but it's fine. I like it. And I, I like the sheerness of this ribbon too, because I can see the bumblebee through there. It's so cute. All right. I'm gonna just turn that guy upside down so that maybe it'll help to flatten it. And I don't know if you noticed, but this bow got put on a little crooked, but I actually did that intentionally. I don't always glue them on um straight like some of them I put smack dab in the middle but others I kind of just like that guy's more on the side this guy's more on the side and then it just is a little bit gives it a little bit more interest I think okay so okay I got the big guy half put together so I did another knot at the base. I put three beads in another knot and I'm probably gonna leave, like, leave it like that, but I'll decide when I go to um, hang them. If I decide that they're not hanging evenly, then I might put another knot and another bead. The knots always help to shorten the strings. So um, if, uh, 
if it's not if they're not hanging the length that I want then I can shorten them by adding knots so my little tag only got one yeah one little bead there's like a little knot here and a bead and then I've got the faith hanging out with the sheer ribbon on that side and then um the tag covers part of the butterfly but that's okay we still know there's that it's a butterfly and it's there or if I want I can turn it so the little leaf is there so then um what we're going to do on this side is I got a little bow made out of my yarn that is going to go on there and we're going to put the tag on so oh I've already got my yarn here already so I always like to take my yarn and fold it in half and put that through and then loop the tails in and then pull it nice and nice and tight. And I think we'll put one little bead on here again. Um, I was debating on whether I wanted to put a dark bead or a light bead. And I think I'm going to go with the dark bead just so that it ties into the beads at the top. Okay, so how do you thread onto um, thicker yarn or yarn that you know is going to unravel. Of course, you could put a piece of tape on here, but I still struggle with that, trying to get it through um, tiny holes. So what I've got here is, is a piece of really heavy fishing line, and you could use a heavy-duty thread too. And I don't know if you can see it, but I just folded it in half right here. It's like all looping up on me, sorry, but I just folded it in half so that I can push that fold through the bead. Where can you see that? There we go. And then through that little loop that I have there, I can put in my yarn. Okay, so my yarn is in there and then I can pull on the fishing line and get my bead over to the other side. Simple as that. And then we've got our bead on there. Okay, so I am just going to take this and wrap it around just kind of determining where I want it to to hang and and I think I kind of want it there so I've got my yarn on either side of the top beads and I'm just going to wrap it around one more time so that I can tie it on a tight knot And then I, one more. Now, you could leave those tails hanging down. Um, in fact, I will leave them, I think, until I get this glued on. Actually, nope, it'll be too much. So I'm going to trim these off. I did trim them pretty close, so hopefully my knot was tight enough that it doesn't unravel. And then I want my tag to hang more on that side, so I'm going to glue my bow kind of on the side of where I want that to hang. I just want my bow to be a smidge bigger. Okay, hopefully I can do this without burning myself. Okay. 
Okay, I've <laughs> got glue strings going everywhere. All right. I kind of like how my bow is a little bit like um, falling over. It's really loopy there. So I'm going to just trim and trim. I'm just trimming this side a smidge more. There we go. All right. There is that side. And then and we've got that side. Okay. Now, let's get rid of some of this mess out of the way. Um, the last one. So, this guy... Uh, same thing. I've got a little um, bow that is going to go on this side. And then on that same side, I actually, I don't even know where I got this. I, it, came, it was in like my jar of old buttons, but it's a little blue charm. And I'm actually going to hang it down um, under the bow on this side. So, and then... This, this guy on this side is getting the yarn. I think that's the way I had it planned. Yep, yep, that's, that's the way I had it planned. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other side first so I can decide where my charm is gonna hang. And Actually, I kind of think it can hang just like that. I don't think it needs to be up any anymore. Nope, and nope, and I definitely don't want it down anymore. So it was great where it was. So I am just gonna tie it. I'm all I'm, I've done is actually I want to make a knot in the top of here because I'm going to show you again how to thread the beads on just in case you didn't quite catch it the first time okay so there's a knot there and then all i'm doing is tying this yarn that is really starting to fray because i'm over handling it onto here okay gotta mess around with it here. Trying to kind of get that tied under the knot. There we go. Because that does like, it will help camouflage it. Okay, I like where that's hanging. And I'm going to just give this one more tie right here. And then I'm trimming it. And this will all be covered up by the bow when I glue it on to that side too. So, all right. So I just tied it back there. Okay. A little bit of glue. Yeah, that was that was hot. <laughs> okay. Thought I trimmed that all off. I guess I missed that little bit. Okay, so and he's just hanging there. That's so sweet. Okay, let's cut these tails. And I'm just 
cutting them on an angle. I just don't want them um, hanging off the edge, like the heart, like I don't want when you're looking at this side to see these tails popping out. Okay, before we do anything more, let's get a couple more beads put on here. And I want them to stay the same. So I'm gonna thread a dark guy on, put that loop through there and slide it on. Sometimes you have to pull a little harder. I'm gonna see if I can get this closer to the camera for you. Okay, so we want um, this one next. Okay, so I'm sliding it, that fishing line in. So I've got my loop, putting the yarn into that loop, sliding the bead back over and sliding the bead onto the yarn and pulling the fishing line Sometimes I put my finger in between that yarn there and pull it because it, those, those holes are small on the beads. Okay, and then one more. And this is a little tiny guy that is going on. So, okay. Oops, slide them on and pull. He's on. And then I'm going to just do one more knot. I don't know if you've seen the um, DIY Christmas trees we did at Christmas time, and I know that's probably the last thing you're thinking about right now, but um, this yarn looks so pretty on those too. And um, that that's a fun one for, for Christmas when you're looking for Christmas projects. Okay, so we've got that. And then Let's just take this and glue him onto the other side. And this is something about this yarn and it just leaves this, I don't know, this feminine, like girly feel to, to it. It almost, yeah, I don't know. I can't really describe it, but I just got hot glue on the bead. Like it just takes drop cloth. And even though I've done a lot of cute projects with drop cloth that you can, you know, like elevate, the, this um, yarn just seems to elevate it all by itself. See how cute that is? Now I'm gonna cut those tails. Um, and There that one is. Okay, so get those out of the way. So then if we have this guy hanging this way, this one is hanging there and this one there. So those hang so pretty together. And then we will turn it around so then these guys all, whoops, I'm not holding on to them very well. Let me try that again. Okay. So, so those two, and you don't have to make the, these double-sided. I really wanted to give you guys more options. Um, and that was one of the reasons why I made them all double-sided. Like, you see how cute that is? And it, if a person um, wanted to not change that tag, you could glue that tag on an angle like that. It doesn't have to be um, free floating, but really once you get it hanging or situated where you want, it's going to stay there. Okay. And you know what I forgot to do while, um, we were, I was sewing and getting everything ready to come back was I forgot to tell you 
at the, um, sorry, fumbling over all my words here. I forgot to pull all of the names of the transfers that I used. Some of these are brand new ones um, that you can still get your hands on. So let me just double check here. Um, all right. So for instance, this love, that one is old. I'm still going to link it for you. It's from the Homespun Tags collection. I believe that this little birdie and wreath, I believe they're discontinued as well, but they're, nope, they're not from the same ones. The wreath is from the Homespun's Tags collection, but the little birdie itself is from the Farmhouse Wreath collection. Okay. The love and the heart, those are, oh goodness. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the love, the heart, and these little hearts are all from Heart to Get, and it's in a little package like this. And these three, I don't know if I can hold them all up, all came in there too. Okay, so there's that one. And then I didn't use that guy. Um, the little leaf on here and that we also used on the tags today. That is also from, oh, it's upstairs drying. It's also from the Homespun's tag collection, I think. But I will link all of this for you guys. And then this XOXO, yes, is from Love Bug, and this is also a new collection. I'm calling them collections, but a new transfer. Um, and then the little hearts that I did all over here is from, oh, it's on it, Love Shack, and then all of this. So there's also this cute plaid pattern that would be really cute. And then there's other words like be mine, um, a little cute heart here. Like there's so many words and sayings on all of these transfers. So many um, that you can use. And then I already told you about the ones that we used today. I think that that covered it. So, oh, the faith. It's... um. Goodness. Oh, that one I can't remember, but it was one of the motivational ones um, that came out, I think, Christmas of 2021, like just or yeah, right at the end of 2021, I think. Um, I think it was like a faith can move mountains, um, but I just liked the faith. So anyhow, that was not a short video. So I hope you hung in there with me. Um, I will style these all up and put a few photos at the end for you. So thanks for hanging out with me again and we will see you next time. Bye.